Zambia's Judicial Complaint Commission will meet today, September 30th, to hear the suspension of three constitutional court judges by President Hakaide Hichilema. The president suspended them on September 23rd for reasons yet to be officially clarified. But the Lusaka Times reports over the weekend that such suspensions are usually linked to accusations of misconduct by a judge. Zambian Information Minister Cornelius Muitua tells me that President Hichilema complied with the law. First of all, the President of the Republic of Zambia has no authority arising out of his free will and volition to be able to initiate a suspension of uh, judges of the courts of Zambia. Meaning, therefore, that the President of the Republic of Zambia can only act in accordance with the law to suspend judges as recommended by the Judicial Complaints Commission. What do you say to your critics who are arguing that the suspension is a move on the part of President Hakai de Hichilema to consolidate control over all arms of government and uh, therefore pave the way for political maneuvering ahead of the 2026 election. This is a complaint that has uh, subsisted at the doorsteps of the JCC arising from a citizen who had uh, complained. I must emphasize here that a suspension is a suspension literally what the word means. This is not a removal. A suspension is to allow for the judges now, without continuing to perform their role in their state as judges, to be given an opportunity to be heard, to exonerate themselves over the allegations for which the complaint is founded on. The claims by certain quarters of the opposition that this is a maneuver to consolidate uh, power They are totally unfounded. Otherwise, if that were the case, then we are going to say that uh, when it took place, uh, when uh, Patriotic Front came into office, were they also trying to consolidate their hold on power? We think that there is no credibility, there is no political maneuver or intention whatsoever on this particular move. If these three judges were dismissed or removed because of what I understand to be what judicial misconduct, what exactly did they do? Well, I think that uh, the matter will now be able to unravel now that uh, this has uh, reached uh, to this level. For what I understand now is, uh, and of course, I don't want to sound pre uh, judicate to the proceedings that are already under the tribunal's uh, consideration is that uh, a number of uh, decisions or omissions were done by these particular judges, among which you know, include their conduct in handling certain uh, legal matters that were brought before them. But like I've said, when I speak to those issues, I don't want to sound to be a, a prejudicate to those matters. And it is better that, uh, that we are reserved from making comments that might suggest in any way that uh, there must be culpability on the part of one judge or the other. Cornelius Muitua is the Zambia's information minister. He was speaking with me from the capital, Lusaka. Hundreds of Kenyans are currently stranded in Lebanon feeling abandoned as a violent conflict escalates in the region between Israel and Hezbollah militant group. Their story of fear under Harish bombardments and gunfire has become their constant reminder of how far they are from the safety of home. But it also pokes holes on the government's strategy of sending the barras abroad with no fallback safety measures when those countries become war zones. On Thursday, the government insisted all Kenyans were safe in Lebanon, but didn't clarify whether they were plans for evacuation or at least 
relocate them to safer parts of Lebanon. Harima Mohamud, Kenya's non-resident ambassador to Lebanon, who is best in Kuwait, said that the embassy was in touch with all Kenyans stranded in Lebanon and that they had been provided with information on who to call in a case of danger. He said, we have a hotline number and we are ready to assist anytime 24 hours. That number was given ours plus 9659090671. Nine. But those stranded in Lebanon give a different experience. They urge that they had provided the information needed but haven't heard from authorities since those trapped are migrant workers, most of them women who came to Lebanon to work in the domestic and hospitality sectors. According to the Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, at least 26,599 Kenyans are in Lebanon. In October last year, 1,500 Kenyans were allocated jobs in Lebanon as part of a deal between various agencies and the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The bombings began last week as Israel launched offensives on Hezbollah, whom it accuses of scaring away residents near the border with Lebanon. Hezbollah is allied to the Hamas militant group in Gaza, with whom Israel has warred for the last one year when the militant group launched an unprecedented attack on Israel in October 2023. At least 400 people have been killed in Lebanon since the offensives started. Some Kenyan claimed their employee, employers locked away their travel documents as they fled to bombardment areas, leaving them at the mercy of the shelling. Yet, this conflict was always on the horizon from an early as from as early as January. In July, the government in Nairobi had, in fact, asked Kenyans to fill out a form providing details, in detailed information, including their addresses and phone contacts. <laughs> 